Wow, the moon is an unusually bright blue sky today. Also, why is there another planet between the moon and Earth? The moon apparently has an atmosphere because those are clearly clouds. I'm not entirely convinced by these spacesuits. They look more like hazmat suits to me. Then again, this world's moon doesn't have an atmosphere, so I guess they don't have to worry about things like pressure and extreme temperatures. What do you think it is? It looks like a giant space dumpster. No, it doesn't. A dumpster is more rectangular in shape. If anything, it looks more like a trash can. Shall we radio into NASA about this unusual object we just discovered? Nah, let's just open it. What's the worst that could happen? Babu slaps Squat in the head and yet it makes no sound. Not even a comical one. Also abuse. Walk with me, talk with me. Oh, you made me step in a puddle, you nitwit! Proof that there is indeed water on the moon. So here's something I've never heard anyone else bring up before. What exactly happened to the astronauts? I mean, they completely disappear after this, never to be seen again. Did Rita kill them? Did she turn them into monsters? Did they escape back to Earth? And if so, why didn't they tell NASA, sorry NASADA, or anybody about what they found? Were they afraid that people would think they were crazy? I mean, think about it. These two random guys unleashed an evil space witch, practically kicking off this entire franchise, and yet we know nothing about them and never seen them again. Who the hell were they? Ah, the 90s, when bright clashing colours and random shapes were considered in fashion. Exposed female midriff? In a kid's show? Was that allowed in the 90s? Better play it safe. Nice recovery, Zach. Yeah, thanks for teaching me, Jason. That was awesome, Kimberly. Thanks, Trini. Announcing your friends' names for no reason other than to let the audience know who our main characters are. Oh no, look who's here. Ball and Skull. These two are easily the best thing about Power Rangers. Their comedic antics combined with their character arcs throughout the first six seasons kept us all coming back for more. And so, in salute to these two fine gentlemen, I will knock off five sins for this episode. How about that double date we talked about? Sorry, guys. Skull knows that no means no. I'll take another sin off for that. But add one back for Bog's persistence. When Rita calls for Finster, we see him hiding away and giggling. This leads me to believe that Finster's favourite hobby is to keep his boss waiting. Did Billy really need to wear all that blue during Jason's karate class? Would the writers worried that the little kids would not be able to tell him apart from the other guys in karate geese? Jim Bean. Jim Bean? Now's not the time to be discussing alcohol, Jason. Instead of telling Bog to get lost, Jason chooses to humiliate him in front of his class. The rangers just happen to be wearing clothes that are the same colours as their ranger suits before they become rangers. Hey guys. Hey, hey Ernie. Ernie. Who ordered the spinach juice? Spinach juice. As Ernie walks away, he casually throws a tray full of cups into Bog's face. And Skull apparently helps him. Some friend he is. Oh no, an earthquake! Everybody, lightly skip to safety! While everybody else runs out of the juice bar, the rangers, the supposed role models of the show, decide the best thing to do is to stay by their tables and dance around a bit. Are they worried someone might steal their seats? A moment of silence for this poor teddy bear that was mutilated for this one and only scene. Wait a minute, you're not Brian Cranston. Teleport to us five overbearing and over-emotional humans. No! Teenagers. Instead of calling upon military trained experts or professional athletes, Zolan puts the fate of the world in the hands of a bunch of random teenagers. More specifically, Zolan puts the fate of the world in the hands of overbearing and over emotional teenagers. The rangers suddenly stop running and stand still in the middle of an earthquake. You know, now that I look at it, the original command center isn't that impressive. It's just one massive room with all the computers placed in the tiny circle in the middle. This isn't exactly the mall, is it? Kimberly Hart, Master Detective. Billy, who's supposed to be the smart one of the group, decides to push a bunch of random buttons on the console he's never seen before. How do you know you're not launching nuclear missiles at populated cities? Robo Slapstick. A fully sentient multifunctional automaton. That would have been my first guess too. The next two and a half minutes is nothing but exposition. Behold, the keys to your power. Those don't look like keys to me. Morph? Metamorphosis. That means to change. Then they said the show wasn't educational. Okay, let's get this out of the way. They put the black guy in the black ranger suit and the Asian girl in the yellow ranger suit. Let's just give them five sins each and never address it again. The saber-toothed tiger dinosaur will be under your command. The saber-toothed tiger is not a dinosaur. Also, the saber-toothed tiger is not a tiger. I'm not adding this in, I just thought I'd mention it. 
Well, now that didn't go very well, did it? Ay, yi yi. Yeah, those first impressions can be tricky. Whenever I meet someone new, I always tell them that the fate of the world depends on them wearing brightly coloured spandex and fighting a golden monkey. Also, did you have some kind of backup plan in case this happened? I get the feeling you would just had Alpha 5 zap five more random teens to your weird alien laboratory. He could have sent us back into town. Well, you did walk out on them before they could offer you a lift home. Zordon, I'm surprised, teenagers! Even Rita is shocked at Zordon's poor choice for Earth's defenders. I'm not entirely convinced there's enough putty to fill out those molds. There is no way those figures should be in that shape from that mold. Into the monster matic they go. Ten seconds should do it. Alright then, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was nowhere near ten seconds. Why does Rita's telescope have crosshairs on it? Does she plan on sniping the rangers? Would it suddenly be more effective than sending a bunch of weird random monsters after them once a week? Wow, that blast was so powerful it turned Jason's shirt white and Trini into a completely different person. Zordon said these power morphers to give us power. Let's do it! Hey, maybe these power morphers will power us up and give us enough power to defeat these powerful enemies who are overpowering us with their power. Power. And wait, Zordon just let them take those powerful items with them? What well, if they never came back? I think Zordon is a little too trusting of five random teenagers he just met. Two thirds into the episode, and only now do we get to see the Power Rangers in their suits. Also, where did all those plants come from? Are they supposed to be in the desert or something? After finally morphing, the Rangers are immediately teleported into the city to fight more enemies that conveniently just happen to be there so the producers can use the stock footage for it. And I guess the putties left back in the desert were either called back or left wondering what to do next. I like to think that they settled down and established a colony. Powerful sorceress Rita, who can shoot fireballs at the rangers from the moon, thinks that the best way to grow her monsters is to throw her magical staff down to earth. How does she even get that staff back? Does she tie it to a fishing line and reel it back in? Hey, nice stereo! Apparently the Zords are equipped with stereos, so that the rangers can destroy giant monsters whilst listening to their favourite Beliado songs. Does this show seriously expect me to believe that these teenagers know exactly how to pilot these gigantic robots on their first try? I wouldn't even expect them to get the stereo working. I'm just going to come out and say it, the Megazord is the greatest piloted robot of all time. I await your impending thrashing of me in the comments section. Jason, that blow didn't even phase him. Man. What do you mean didn't phase him? It knocked him off his feet. Almighty Warrior Goldar says that the Rangers are finished. However, when they call for the Power Sword and even struggle to pick it up, Goldar suddenly tucks his tail between his legs and runs away. More abuse. Not. Not. In this shot, Alpha has his back to the Rangers. However, in the next shot, he's suddenly facing the rangers. Then he turns away again, and then back to them. And then away again. Who ordered the spinach juice? Phenomenal cosmic power! All right, class, what is it that martial arts helps us to develop? Really? Strike first! Strike hard! No mercy, sir! I don't know if I've got what it takes. It's all a state of mind, Billy. You don't need to be strong for martial arts. Yeah, man, it's all up here. There is no spoon. Welcome, humans. Uh, uh. So who are you? Like, what are you? Say my name, Eisenberg. God damn right. Now that you have become Power Rangers, you must follow three basic rules or lose the protection of the power. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Second rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. <laughs>